Hey, what's going on guys? It's Alex here from Simple Mods and welcome back to another video. Today is a pretty exciting day as the new 9th gen Intel Core processors are officially out, which means you'll finally be able to see some juicy benchmark results and compare how these new CPUs perform when stacked against last gen from Intel and also against AMD's Ryzen. So I did manage to get my hands on the new um, KSQ CPU. So I have the i9 9900K, the i7 9700K and also the i5 9600K along with the new Z390 Aorus Pro motherboard, and this is all thanks to Gigabyte. So thanks a lot guys for helping supply these parts for my review. This is actually my first time having a go at a new CPU review, and I do have to say it is pretty exciting, uh, getting to share my thoughts and results out right at launch. And uh, I didn't have a lot of time to unfortunately run uh, too many benchmarks, although I'm sure other channels like Hardware Unbox will not disappoint. I think Steve will definitely be able to satisfy you there. Um, and hopefully you guys uh, still enjoy my video as well. So in this video, I'll be looking at purely out of the box performance and seeing how these new CPUs compare against each other and what kind of performance gains the i9 9900K is able to offer, although at a much more premium price point as I'm sure we're all aware of by now. I will come back with overclocking results in another video when I take a closer look at the Z390 Aorus Pro motherboard from Gigabyte. And I also have the more premium Z390 Aorus uh, Master motherboard here as well. So let's begin by looking at what's new that the 9th gen Intel CPUs bring to the table. Firstly, it's uh, great to see Intel bringing out an 8th core 16 thread unlocked processor to the more mainstream Z platform, something that AMD users have been enjoying since early 2017 when AMD's Ryzen launched. And while the performance is there with Intel's new 8th core 16 thread mainstream i9 processor, the 9900K, the price point is I'm sure not what a lot of us expected it to be. Actually, all of the new CPU models that I'm looking at today have been introduced by Intel at a higher MSRP, and currently you'll even struggle finding them available at the um, MSRP price point. Um, what's also surprising is that the i7 variant, being the 9700K with this generation, no longer features hyperthreading, so it's only an 8-core, eight 8-thread eight CPU. However, it comes in at a higher price when compared to the 8th gen 8700K that still offered hyperthreading with 6 cores and 12 threads. Other than the bump in core count and changes in hyperthreading between different models, there are also higher turbo frequencies being offered, with the i9 9900K achieving that sweet 5 GHz straight out of the box. Although I'm not sure if that should be a good enough reason to get people excited about, since the 8700K would quite easily achieve 5 GHz in an overclock with a bit of tinkering as well. Although 5 GHz on an 8 core CPU is pretty cool, I guess, but you are paying a pretty decent premium for that. And also remember that the max turbo boost frequencies out of the box are single core only. So if you do want to achieve a 5 GHz all core on the 9900K, you will have to do a bit of manual overclocking. And then mostly everything else with 9 gen is basically the same. Still on the 14 nanometer process, same cache levels, same TDP, and no changes in PCIe lane allocation. However, it's great to see Intel actually listening to consumers and now offering a soldered thermal interface material underneath the IHS with 9 gen CPUs, which should definitely help with thermals. Also, what's good to see with the new Z390 chipset is native USB 3.1 Gen 2 support, so third-party motherboard vendors such as Gigabyte would be able to free up some of the PCH, PCIe allocation and utilize these elsewhere, which is definitely great to see. So I guess if you're looking at it this way, you are getting extra PCIe lanes. However, it will be up to the third-party motherboard vendors how they utilize these. I chose the Z390 Aorus Pro motherboard to conduct my initial testing since it is a more uh, mid-range Z390 board from Gigabyte, priced around $340 in Australia and about $190 um, in the US. And I also performed all of my testing using the Cooler Master Hyper 212 cooler with a 120 millimeter Master Fan Pro air pressure fan attached. Same as the motherboard choice, I wanted to test on an affordable cooler and the Cooler Master Hyper 212 is still one of the most popular ones out there. The motherboard was updated to the latest available BIOS from the Gigabyte website, which is version F6F at the time of testing and filming. And other than applying the uh, memory XMP profile, as well as either disabling or enabling the multi-core enhancement setting to see what kind of performance difference uh, this makes as well, the rest of the BIOS settings were left to stock, including the CPU cooler fan profile. For the rest of the specs, we have two 8GB Aorus RGB DDR4 memory modules running at 3200 MHz, a Gigabyte RTX 2080 Ti gaming OC graphics card, 512GB of Samsung 970 Pro M.2 SSD storage, and the Cooler Master V1200 Watt Platinum power supply. Along with the new 9th gen uh, CPUs, I also threw in the i7 8700K in the mix, which was tested on the same motherboard, as Z390 is backwards compatible with 8th gen CPUs. Now I should also note here that 9th gen CPUs will in fact work on some Z370 motherboards, however this will depend on third-party vendor implementation and you'll most likely need a new BIOS update as well 
Uh, from AMD side, for my testing, I only had access to the Ryzen 7 2700X, and this was run off the Gigabyte X470 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard, with the rest of the components and settings staying the same, including the CPU cooler and the memory XMP profile set to 3200 MHz. Final benchmark results were averaged across three different runs, with the highest CPU temperature and voltage being recorded as well for each test. I am featuring all of my testing uh, results and findings in this video, however, for the sake of not repeating myself too much, I won't be going over absolutely everything, so feel free to pause the video on any of the results that you're more interested in. Now, kicking things off with Cinebench R15, we can see that the Ryzen 7 2700X is actually still performing pretty well um, in multi-threaded workloads, thanks to its 16 threads, of course. Although, as expected, the 9900K comes out on top thanks to its higher clock speed. Here, the i9-9900K is 23% faster than the 2700X and about 44% faster than the 8700K. The i7-9700K is in an interesting spot with this test since it does manage to beat out the 8700K, although only by about 6.7%. However, the 2700X manages to come out on top, so its 16 threads definitely helped it there. Although it's interesting to see how much of a performance gain the higher clock speed um, on the 8-threaded 9700K offers uh, in this test that manages to tighten the gap between it and the 16-threaded 2700X. In the single-core tests, we can pretty much see results as expected uh, based on the max turbo frequencies offered by the CPUs. With the 5 GHz out of the box, the 9900K offers coming out on top. In Blender, I ran uh, the BMW Image Render uh, with the CPU offering the quickest render time coming out on top. And we can see similar performance results here. And as expected, the 9900K uh, manages to produce the fastest time. And in this Blender test, it's about 24% faster than the 2700X and about 31% faster than the 8700K. And with this Blender test, we can see an even smaller performance improvement of about 3.4% between the 9700K and the 8700K. We see a similar trend for Intel in HWBOT's X265 render test, both 1080p and 4K. However, AMD's 2700X does not seem to be a preferred CPU in this test uh, when compared to Intel. I also ran 3D Mark. Um, I ran Firestrike Ultra and Time Spy Extreme. And while it may not look at the overall um, total score results are fairly close. With the Firestrike Ultra physics score, however, the 9900K is about 29.5% faster than the 2700X and about 32% faster than the 8700K. And the 2700X manages to slightly edge out the 9700K in this test by about 1.8%. With the Time Spy Extreme CPU score, the 9900K is about 45% faster than the 2700X. 2700X and about 40% faster than the 8700K. However, TimeSpy tells a different story um, for the 9700K, coming in at about 20% faster than the 2700X. So we can definitely see from the two benchmarks that Firestrike Ultra prefers higher threaded CPUs with the 2700X managing to just slightly come out ahead of the 9700K. However, in TimeSpy Extreme, the 9700K comes out on top, giving an indication that the higher out-of-the-box clock speed helped it there rather than its lack of hyper-threading impacting its performance. Multicore enhancement is still a thing with 9th gen Intel and depending on the motherboard you're getting, it may come with this setting enabled out of the box. So I did want to take a look at that as well, seeing what kind of performance difference it makes and also how it impacts on CPU voltage and thermals. If you're not familiar with the multicore enhancement setting, what it does is it looks at the highest single core turbo frequencies offered by the CPUs and the motherboard actually applies more voltage to the CPU in an attempt to boost all cores to this highest um, available single core frequency. However, as you can see from my results, while this does improve performance, it does so with much more voltage being pushed to the CPU and this does raise thermals by quite a bit. You can see the highest voltages recorded in this table compared between MCE off and MCE on on the Z390 Aorus Pro motherboard and how much more voltage the motherboard tried to pump um, through these CPUs with MCE on. And as you can see, the max temperatures recorded between my testing also increased quite a bit with MCE on. Um, with the i9-9900K actually hitting TJ Maxx at what seems to be 100 degrees Celsius in some of the tests and actually performing worse. So you'll definitely need a lot better cooler than the Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO that I use with my testing if you're planning to take advantage of the i9-9900K and overclock it. However, I'm sure that with a bit of tinkering that would be able to lower the MCE on applied voltage in a manual overclock and therefore also further um, lower thermals as well. So I wouldn't really recommend using the multi-core enhancement setting. I do think that you should keep an eye out on the Z390 motherboard um, that you're getting to see if this um, setting comes enabled out of the box. So rather than using MCE, I would look into applying your own manual overclock at the vCore and thermals that you're happy with. How well your CPU will do, however, will depend on your luck in the silicon lottery. 
Now I also had Shadow of the Tomb Raider as the only game that I had time to look into with my testing. However, on both my Z390 and X470 test systems, I had trouble even getting the game to load with DirectX 12 enabled. So I did look into it and it does seem like it is uh, something to do with the Windows 10 version you have installed, um, needing to be version 1803, um, which I did have on both systems with the latest Windows updates applied as well. However, the game would just simply not start in DirectX 12. So there was unfortunately not much point for me in focusing on DirectX 11 results as the 2700X does perform much better under DirectX 12. So I didn't want to cripple it with the DirectX 11 benchmark. However, I did use uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider to record the typical max uh, system power draw uh, with the testing configuration between all the CPUs and um, also showcasing what difference MCE makes uh, on power draw as well. So there you have it guys, my coverage on the new 9th gen KSQ CPUs. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found the information useful. And I do apologize that I didn't have enough time to cover too many gaming titles as part of my testing. So I also look uh, forward to checking out some other reviews as well. Um, so let me know in the comments below um, what you thought about my coverage. Um, stay tuned for more in-depth look at some upcoming Z390 motherboards uh, that I'll be checking out. And uh, thanks for watching, subscribe if you enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.